Hey guys, John here. Today we're going to be making kind of a retro analog ERP stuff, so something kind of like this. And the best part of this is that it's actually very easy to make something like this with a CS80V and it just sounds good for some reason. So, okay, let's go ahead and go to a new preset, kind of wipe all this thing, what we're going with here. So the first thing that we're gonna be starting with is a saw wave. So for the first thing that we need to do is this low pass filter. Let's bring this down maybe almost halfway. So we have kind of a dull saw wave, something like that. Bring up our resonance all the way, our initial level all the way. And then let's start to add a little bit of this attack here on the envelope, something maybe, between 16 and maybe 20 milliseconds, we can maybe fine tune this in just a little bit. And then bring this AL up here to the top, the attack level. So we're kind of getting that wham wham kind of sound there. Now we need to bring in a little bit of the amp release here. And also the envelope release too. So this right here is already half the battle. Now what we're gonna be doing as well is we're going to be mixing the second oscillator in, but really just a basic saw wave in there. So here is the mix between the first one and the second one down here on the middle right-hand side of the synth. And we're gonna be mixing this all the way down here. Just that basic saw wave, we're gonna subtly mix that with our first oscillator. So it's gonna be something kind of like this. And if you like that detuning amount, that's cool. If you want to adjust it here, we can maybe do something a little bit more. So this is 0.176. Let's double click this to zero and let's see what we like here. We could even do a little bit of panning if we'd like to. Just a little subtlety changes right there. Next up, we're going to go down here to the bottom where it says tremolo. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Turn the depth all the way to the top and the speed all the way to the left. So speed all the way to the left, depth all the way to the right. Kind of get that vibe going on. Now this by itself, you could even just use this as a pad already or some kind of chord stabs if you'd like to. Really whatever you want to use it for. But yeah, so we're going to keep working on this here. We're going to add a little bit of portamento. Just a tiny bit, just a little bit, just a little, little dash. Okay, now we're going to go to the arpeggiator. Let's turn this on here for the sync. By default, it's going to be 1 over 16. That's fine, especially if we're at a slower tempo of 112. However, we're going to bring this to 2, and really depending on the order that you want to go with, up is generally fine for most parts. You could also do order, which is also kind of fun as well. And then depending on how snappy you want this ARP to be, yes, you can go to the gate a little bit here, but you can also go to the VCF level on the sustain and take a listen how different this is gonna make the sound here. And then once we have our sustain down to the bottom, we can go and fine tune the decay. Sometimes it's nice to have it a little bit open. So what we can do is bring this all the way to the bottom and start slowly raising it till we find an appropriate sound here. Maybe something right there and then bring up a little bit of sustain. Something like that should work just fine. So next up, we're, we're going to add a little bit of effects here. So go to the advanced section here and the effects. I do really like this tape echo, but let's make the stereo spread all the way to the right. A little bit of fine over here. It goes a long way here. And let's bring up our dry wet and see how this sounds.
Okay, now a little bit of course also goes a long way. So of course, Juno 6, I do really like the preset of the mode one, which is nice, but maybe 50% might be a little bit much. Let's bring this all the way down and kind of slowly introduce until we kind of feel that's enough. Maybe somewhere around there. Let's bring up our fader just a bit here. Okay, and last but not least, we're gonna add a little bit of reverb. And for this here, I do want to increase the decay just a tiny bit, and then the size just a little bit here on the input high pass. Let's bring this from 40 something to maybe about 160, 165, whatever, something like that. And then the low pass, uh, that could be about fine. Carry with all the way to the top. And depending how much of the second oscillator you want to mix in, this slider here is going to determine that. So all the way to the bottom. It's going to be this here. You can soften, soften up a little bit by cutting out the high frequencies with this second LPF here. Really depends on how much you want to do. Maybe here might be kind of nice here. Let's double click this here. So this is going to be in the middle here, but I do like to kind of lean a little bit more on the first one because we have that sound here. So we're just introducing the second one just a little bit. Okay, now let's turn our ARP back on here. And then what's kind of cool as well, so with our mod wheel down over here on the left-hand side, so all the way down, basically which, what we've been hearing, but however, take a listen how different this or how different this sounds with the modulation wheel going up. So this is all the way up here. What we can do as well, what I like doing is getting the pan and kind of bring this down just a little bit. It really spreads out the sound, kind of making it go back and forth. We can do the VCA, but we're already kind of doing a little bit of tremolo here, so we don't really need to do that as much. We could do the VCO, but I think a lot of these default settings here for the mod wheel are pretty cool. We can just mess with the pan, but go ahead and go crazy if you would like to. So with the mod wheel at its full influence, it would sound something kind of like this. And maybe if that glides a little bit too much for you, we can always back this down just a little bit here. So that's why I'm saying that the glide is cool. It's a cool effect, but it's easy to overdo it. Especially if we're doing a lot of distance like this. Keep in mind, so this is kind of the basic core concept. There's a couple other things that we can kind of add to this, kind of enhance this. We could use a little bit of square wave and add some pulse width modulation. We can do that if we'd like to, but I prefer to leave this one off for this patch. I think that's more than enough. And then for our effects here, so we're using the Tape Echo, Chorus Juno 6, and then our reverb right here. However, if we have external reverb, sometimes I feel like that ties in a patch a little bit better. We can turn this off here, and then for our patch right here, we can go and add something like Ball Hollow Vintage Verb, which I think kind of opens it up a little bit more.
But it's really up to you how you want to program that. For this patch, saving this for you guys, I'm going to turn off this reverb here and then save it on within the patch itself. But feel free to use your own external reverb, which opens up this slot to maybe something like a, uh, where are you? Like the stereo pan, something that you can kind of even more move this stuff left and right, something kind of like that. So if you'd like to get this patch, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.